we're going to talk about like <laughs> go, setting goals, physical feats, challenges. Let's motivate you. Everyone that set their uh, New Year's resolution. Motivated. Resume, motivated. <laughs> I like to set myself like like physical or I like to set myself many challenges across yeah, yeah. business, uh, personal, and then like family goals. And for me, it just keeps me ticking over. If you gave me two choices, right? You said, uh, I can give you 10 million subscribers right now, or I can guarantee you that in five years time, your videos that get roughly the same amount of views that they do now. I'd take that one. I remember when I said I was gonna first do this, so like I I bounced out and like left pension, I left everything behind. I'm like, I'm doing this. And everyone thought I'd lost my head. I think the only reason I'm on planet Earth now is to kind of like try and, it sounds a bit wanky, but it's trying to entertain people. There are people buried in metrics and they think, oh, I need more and more, better and better. And then there are people that just make stuff because they want to make stuff. And I'm in that category. I'm, I'm thankful to me. I'm Adam and I'm Josh and this is the Breaking Bread podcast. It's not big, it's not clever, but some people like it and we have fun together. <laughs> it's not quite a haiku, it's a short poem that I wrote you um, in my mind four minutes ago. How are you doing mate? You, look, you look, look a little bit worse for wear because I know, I know you had like a bit of an endurance, some kind of crossfit-y thing this weekend and you look absolutely fucked this week, this morning mate. So. I, I did expect to, to have a lot more energy than I've got now. I don't know why I'm, I'm struggling so much, but it was pretty savage mate. I, uh, I did a high rocks competition in Manchester, which uh, turns out is a lot bigger than I thought it what actually was. Looked heavy, yeah, man. Looks lots of people there. I figured it'd just be like in a school sports hall or something. <laughs> and uh, it's in Manchester City, City Centre at the like a conference centre. Um, yeah. Next behind the Midland Hotel. It was huge, mate. And I saw it. There's lots of shirtless men. There was a lot of shirtless men. A lot of good rigs there. And then me and my mate, Tevi. <laughs> you, you, you you resisted, didn't you, until like, what looked like the last... It was the, literally the last, the last station. station. Then you took your shirt off. We did, yeah. we, we got to, I got to like the second to last station. And uh, I can't remember which one. It, like I, I'm really... I'll, 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 I'll remember it later on. But the second to last station, I was watching... I, I did it, in a double, it was the wall ball things, wasn't it? Yeah, I took it off at the wall balls. But it was so warm <laughs> in this conference centre. I, f- I felt like my ears were on fire. Yeah. Like, cause I, so basically, the the, the actual um, the me and George talking about you. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. Hold on, let me get my notes up. I'll tell you exactly what the stations were because I just assumed it'd be like a little bit of a run and these things in between. I didn't expect it to be as hard as it was, or to have the adrenaline dump that I had. So, like on the first, I like went out on the first lap. So you do a kilometer run and then a station. Yeah, kilometer run, station, kilometer run, station. But the first lap was actually longer. So I think it may be like like one point five k. But the adrenaline dump of like set it off, my mouth would dry as fuck. So we came into the first station and there's somebody there like, do you want a drink? And I'm like, yeah. So the first drink I got was Red Bull because it was a Red Bull station. And it went oh, awful, well, mate. At least it gives you energy though. Well, I don't. Fake energy for like a brief period of time. But When all you want is water though. I felt like yeah. I'd been in desert for a month. Um, right, let me just tell you exactly what the stations were. Right, so this is the competition, right? So a, a, a kilometer run, then you do a thousand meter on the ski erg. A kilometer run, 50 meter sled push at 155 kilos. I saw you doing that. You were moving that very slowly. <laughs> I actually felt pretty strong on that. It's like, that was hard. Uh, then you do a 50 meter sled pull. That's the yeah. one where everyone gets the profile pictures if you're in that world. Because yeah, oh. of the guns. Uh, I'm lacking in the guns, so I didn't, didn't get that. Honest, mate. I didn't get the profile picture. Uh, then uh, 80 meters burpee broad jumps. So it's basically... You say burpee the weirdest way. Burpee. Burpee, dr- burpee, burpee broad burpees. jumps. Yeah. Um, a thousand meter on the rower, a 200 meter farmer carry with two 24 kilo dumbbells. My, my, my heart rate is elevated already. A um, hundred meter sandbag lunges and then a hundred wall balls. Yeah. So that was the station that I got the top of that. Got to say, and the lunges was second to last then, yeah? Yeah. yeah I've got to say by that point, I think I would, you, you were, your form was pretty, uh, pretty solid. You weren't like, I, 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 for, for the sake of humor, I posted like a gift in there of a Bambi or something like that. Yeah. But you actually look pretty steady. I think if I'd done whatever, how many, however many miles you'd done by that point, and however many stations, I'd have been like wobbling all over the place. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. uh, they were, the stations were kind of like a rest, which it sounds mad. Because what I didn't, what I didn't anticipate was that it's basically a running race. I knew it was eight kilometers of running, but by the time you finished it, it's probably closer to maybe like 12, 13, 14. But then with all the fatigue of doing the workouts, yeah, yeah. it's a bit like doing a half marathon. So the only thing I can, that's the only thing I can compare it to is like how I feel now. Is you like, were more, were you more knackered after the half marathon or after this? So after, because my first half marathon that I did, 
I underestimated that a little bit as well. Yeah. So when I finished that, I felt like I couldn't tell if I were even going to throw up or shit myself. And, and the, <laughs> I get that a lot, yeah. And the, <laughs> and the, <laughs> and the DOMS, the, you know, the muscle soreness was it like instant. And I got that when I finished on Saturday. Like I just had instant DOMS. And you look then, a bit pale as well. I mean, normally you've got that kind of flushed red uh, look to you, um, but, which I associate with probably high blood pressure and the stress of having your own business. But it, um, you, you're a bit... Yeah, you're a bit pale this morning. Yeah, and then on Saturday night after the after the gig, I just felt um, I didn't sleep very well. I think my, my yeah. body were like just a bit too spent. Uh, but the actual thing, right? So the, the idea behind this podcast, I, I realise we've just gone straight into this, haven't we? We've completely fucked Skip it up. The YouTube comment. Oh shit. Well, no, we don't necessarily. Need to we, we just with the pleasantries just went on a bit longer. That's all. We're going to be talking about extreme well, extreme feats, physical feats, I guess today to some degree. Yeah. But we can drop in the YouTube comment, George, if you've got one prepared. Should we drop it in now. Yeah, yeah of course, of course, yeah. Complete with jingle. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. Okay, so first comment is from... I don't know why you put this one in. <laughs> this is not a good comment. I like it because... Is it something about <laughs> sexual organs? No, no, no. No, thank God. So our first comment is from Jacob Lawson. Hi, Jacob. It kind of sucks when you name an entire episode over a tiny part of the actual conversation. It's fine to title a clip like that, but not the entire episode. It makes people find out about the flight and then the rest just feels like it's tacked on when it's actually quality stuff. But what do I know? Jacob, you might have to suck the fun out of everything. <laughs> we don't care that much, man. You big fun vacuum. We, we could, we could uh, you know, we could, uh, I, I, I appreciate, at least it's, it is supposed to be constructive criticism, which I appreciate. Thanks, Jacob. Or Jake, uh, for short. Um, uh, but I'm, fuck, I don't know. Well, it's not my fault because I don't title them. It's, <laughs> these guys do that right. But secondarily, like, I don't know, man. There's, there's no real way to do like podcast titles. You could be like really over the top and clickbaity like George is sometimes. Um, or you can just... <clears throat> it's supposed to be an error. It's supposed to be like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, I don't know. I suppose it's a singular the broadest talking point from the episode. I don't yeah, know. I think we normally- Why the don't... fuck did you pick that one? I just thought it was funny because like we always- <laughs> It just came up for <laughs> And I said, I said it on to George. Look, we're normally going like threes. This happened, this happened, and then this happened. And then that, that one, it would just be a bad flight. Yeah, you know though, there's um, th there's a theory, isn't there, about you know the titles that are uh, triplets, so the three three subjects in a title that it's supposed to be satisfying to the human brain. Oh, really? So uh, forget the doing one thing in future, George. Just to uh, like, so this could be uh, Josh is saw. Um, well, I don't know because we've not had the full podcast yet, but uh, shit, <laughs> shit YouTube comment and whatever what we talk about <laughs> later on. I don't know. Uh, right, I've got, I've got, I found another comment which I found really funny. George is just looking at me like, oh, I've got to edit so much already. We've only been going 10 minutes. Right, go on then, what is it? So it's from Murder Worth Hooligan. <laughs> you would be surprised how many gang members watch your stuff, Beard. You're a goat. Gang members watch my <laughs> <Yeah>. stuff? <laughs> He sounds like he's actually a gang member as well. Hey, so, I mean, be. I be careful of, about what I say. I wonder what sort of gang. I'm hoping it's like a a, 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 a non-violent gang. Yeah. Do those exist? <laughs> By their very nature, I guess gangs are violent. What would you call it? your gang if you had a gang? Not a violent gang, but like, what would you? It'd be a bad army, wouldn't it? I, I don't think I'd have a gang. I feel like I'm not really the <laughs> you're, you're like a gang a, type. You're like Alan from The Hangover. You're like a... I'd like a one man wolf. <laughs> <one> man wolf. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, like, I think I'm like him in more, in more ways than one. Yeah, um, I don't know, but uh, if there are any gang members out there, uh, listen. I appreciate you uh, listening and watching. But just, you know, try be. If you're in a violent gang, maybe uh, less violent. Tr try to be less violent. <laughs> Do you remember that? Do you remember that episode? That that uh, level on the uh, Call of Duty. I was never a really big fan of Call of Duty, but there's this level where you've got to pretend like you're in in uh, this uh, Russian. I think it's Russian some kind of Russian gang or something and they go into an airport and they shoot everyone oh. and, you, and you've got to like yeah. shoot people like innocent civilians um, but you, obviously you're a good guy right. Right? so you're like trying to miss on purpose but if they see you miss too many then they know that you're uh, uh. sus <laughs> so if you're doing any gang activities miss people <laughs> make it look convincing that's about as positive as it can be I guess <laughs> <laughs> right, last thing I wanted to, to bring up. I got a message from uh, our mate Mike Winnett this weekend. Oh yeah, Bumchin Mike. Bumchin Mike. Love you, Mike. He sends me a message and he put, um, just landed in Rome and someone at the airport bounced up to me and shook my hand and just said, Mike, Breaking Bread podcast. Love those lads. <laughs> <laughs> so got, is that real? So he got recognised from the podcast. Mike's got nearly 100,000 YouTube subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was recognised because he was on this yeah. podcast twice. How fun is that? 
I bet you love that. Um, yeah, no, that's that's a good thing though. Yeah, it's Where class. was he? It was Rome. Rome, yeah, he's in Rome currently. Nice. Never been. Right, so the actual the, the topic, I know we're going backwards and forwards here, is a tram smash. I think that Jacob were onto something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about like <laughs> setting goals, physical feats, challenges. Let's motivate you. Everyone that set their uh, New Year's resolutions. Motivated. Resolu- motivated. <laughs> so, might win it. <laughs> those that set the New Year's resolutions um, have probably fucked them off by now. Mm. So this is coming out in February. We're going to motiv- motivate you back up in February. Um, we were just talking about the High Rocks competition this weekend. Long story short, mate. It was very fucking difficult. Like, that's pretty much the long and short of that. Um, but I like to set myself like like physical or I like to set myself many challenges across yeah, yeah. business, uh, personal, and then like family goals. And for me, it just keeps me ticking over. Right, steady on, Gary V. <laughs> <laughs> can we can we as well, George, just for context, while we're talking about the, the High Rocks, high rocks uh, competition, overlay some of Josh's footage. If you can't, if you haven't already, set a reminder to rip it from his story because otherwise it'll be gone forever. We need to show people that what was going on. I can get you some. I, get, I can send you them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm. I'm. Uh, sorry, it's my zip uh, <laughs> scratching on the uh, this antique bench. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm with you. I like. I like the idea of. Uh, I don't think I'm massively goal oriented myself, but. Uh, I've, I, yeah. I've no, but I think that. so. What what I think the angle that I want to take on this was the dedication, I guess, to be able to choose some choose something, actually stick it out, which yeah. you've done incredibly well. Actually, actually, quite um, it's pretty admirable that you've been able to do it to stick it out for like so like your YouTube channel started oh, seven we're talking years. About YouTube, all right, okay. uh, like for your physical fitness for I mean thirty seven years, but like when did you start lifting? I'm not in bad shape. I'm for a thirty seven year old. No. Uh, start, when did I start lifting weights? Yeah. Uh, I think it's about 18, 19. What, and you've been dieting pretty hard for since you were 17, 18? No, no, I, th- I, didn't, I, didn't, I never really, I just kind of, I was one of those kids who just went to the gym. I think most people get into like strength training or like just going to the gym, like in general. Um, I think 90% probably of people do that because they want to look different, don't they? Yeah. You don't get many people going in thinking, I want to be fitter as the primary goal, or I want to do it for a sport specific reason. Yeah. Typically it's people want to look better, don't they? I think that was for me when I'm, I was 18. So I was a skinny kid when I was I was 18, you know, like, um, and I think I just wanted to look better. So I started going to the gym, but like when I was 18, 19, I, I didn't really know anything about training. So I would just go and, you know, like you buy like an episode of men's uh, episode, uh, 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 <laughs> you know, like a, a, a men's health magazine or whatever. And it'd be like, I'll oh, do this, do it, you know? Yeah. So you'd be like, oh, that's how you're supposed to do it. Um, and you, you just go to the gym and just kind of do stuff without any real uh, programming behind it, right? Yeah. I think it was only when I probably got to my early to mid twenties. Uh, probably, no, it would have been like early, 22, maybe 23, that I kind of started to lift weights with any kind of regularity and, and, and goal in mind, because that's talking to goals. That's what I think consistency always trumps effort in, you know, in, in a short space yeah. of time. And I think a part, a big part of like uh, lifting weights being a part of your life is it, it, it's, it's just something you do. Um, and you have, you have like a long-term goal, but it's, you know, uh, over time you, you plan to hit some rather than just going to the gym. You know, people in January often say, I'm just going to the gym. They don't really know what they're going to do. Yeah. Go there, maybe a bit of treadmill, lift, do a couple of bicep curls home. Right. But just planning it uh, around like a specific uh, program, I think, um, is something I did in my early twenties. Yeah, I think that's something that's always helped me stick out. Training is uh, is like having uh, having something to aim for. Like I know if you if you're like a David Goggins, you, you train without train without a consequence or whatever he says. Train without a goal in mind. But I don't trust anyone that wakes up at like fucking four a.m. Yeah. Uh, you're one of those people that, and if you've got a morning routine, which is not like get up, take a shit, have a coffee, then I don't, I'd like, there's something about you I just inherently mistrust. <laughs> <laughs> but I think having a target to aim for is really useful. And then it sort of gives you then an opportunity to find out what you, what you like or dislike doing. Uh, so obviously we're on the gym stuff to start with, but like, I personally don't like weightlifting, like, you know, like just yeah. straight up gym lifting. Um, it bores me to tears, man. <laughs> gym lifting. A lot of people are like that though. Um, I think, I think, uh, a lot of people put off. That's, I think there's quite a lot of stigma about like lifting weights. Like I, a lot of my, very few of my friends lift weights, they do any kind of resistance training. A lot of them, and a few of them will do like, you, you know, go for a run. Yeah, yeah. They're into running or they're into swimming or whatever it might be. Very few of them actually do resistance training of any kind. Um, so I don't think you're alone in that, but I, I think that's where I'm not all the way around. I hate like, I hate cardiovascular exercise. Yeah. 
like for like running for running's sake, I could never, I yeah. can't do it. Right. The only the cardiovascular exercise I do is um, I walk a lot. Right. Yeah. If I'm overseas, like shoot like a series, I'll I'll get on the treadmill and it'd be it'd be a bit more of an intense walk, I suppose. Inclined. Like in, you know, yeah. like max incline, at a reasonably brisk pace. Um, so I could like I, I didn't mind like when I was younger. Um, you know, when I played Siren, can you hear that. I say it's the gang members get caught. <laughs> oh, Coming around to see sorry, who will look good. <laughs> um, yeah, when I, I like, I, I, I didn't mind, you know, when I played football and whatnot. That's probably when I was fittest, actually, in terms of actual fitness. Yeah. Um, when I was playing football, like whatever, three, four times a week, um, Sunday league and five aside and just stuff like that. But I didn't, I don't mind it there because there's kind of a purpose to it, right? Yeah, you're running for a reason. I, I hate. Um, Probably for the same reason you don't like lifting weights. I feel like it's it has purpose, but it's, I, I mean, I obviously you like can it. tell I lift weights. Like, oh, yeah, totally. I, I do my resistance training, but for me, I need to be doing it in like a, uh, I guess in like sort of gr- like. So when I played rugby, you're in. You've got a bit of camaraderie. You've got that like. You played rugby. I can't even see that man. You're too tall to play rugby. You're joking, man. Yeah, yeah, you'd be a little like, you'd, you'd we, be shorter. We, we won the Yorkshire Cup. <laughs> Is that a thing? The Yorkshire Cup? Yeah, feels invented. The rugby league, I feel yeah. like you invented that three seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty good thing. Yeah, yeah. Oof, I, could, I, I couldn't handle rugby, man. Um, because that's why, so like doing the high rocks, uh, training, the reason I went up to that, to do that, to the Metcon, the, the gym is because all the lads that I used to play rugby with train up there. So they all like finished rugby and went there. So Tebby, who I did the, uh, the race with, he played up at Jews Rams, he played at Hunslet. So he went quite high level. He went up to sort of a professional level. Um, but for me, like that's where we, I get to do both. So you get to do resistance training like you would as a team. Mm. And then you do your cardio again as a team and it becomes much more tolerable. And then when you've got a target to aim for, again, it, 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 it you're all sort of working towards something. I get that. I think the, the, the t- when it comes to like any kind of strength training, the t- I, the, to me, the target is now, it's, it's very different now to when I first got into it. But like the target is always, I, it, I, it boggles my mind that people don't do, not everyone does some kind of strength training. Yeah. Because it's one of like, you know, people are always looking for the fountain of youth or whatever. One thing that you guarantee to, even, for me now, it's more of a motivation to, uh, to be healthy and just sustain an above average level of strength yeah. into old age, because that's good for you, you know, connective tissue, your joints, you're going to be healthier. And the reason my grandma's fucked and she can barely walk right at 88 um, or whatever she is now um, is not inherently because she is old. It's because if you're old and you don't exercise, you use it or lose it. Yeah. Because naturally, especially in men, uh, natural testosterone production reduces with age, yep. meaning that atrophy is naturally going to occur if you don't do some kind of resistance training. Atrophy being muscle loss. Yeah. And, but so if you look at, I, I, I saw a picture the other day of Mel Gibson and yeah, don't get me wrong. He's probably on some special sauce, right? But he, he yeah, I saw him train. He must, he's training for like some kind of role and uh, you know, he's not like, well, lean or anything. Um, but for his age, what is he like 70 or something, Mel Gibson? He's got to be, he's got to be in, in that range, but he looked, he looked amazing. I thought like at that age to look that good. And it's because he like, he trains and, and, yeah. and stuff like, and he'll probably be way healthier than physically healthier than uh, 67, 67. Right. Imagine like, if I can look like Mel Gibson at six, he's got a great beard as well. Um, <laughs> at that age, I'll be a happy man. Right. But, um, and that, that's one thing that I wanted to bring up was uh, like, we know so like with sort of science and, and experience, we know so much more now about getting older, man or woman. If you're resistant to training or you're actually training regularly, you are going to have a better life in later life. Yeah. Quality of life in, in uh, later quality life. of life in, in later life. Um, uh, so like, I remember like, so like all the middle-aged men that I recall of when I was younger, all kind of looked the same. Yeah. <laughs> like no muscles on the top half, bit of a dad belly pints working. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're like, obviously you look like shit. Like it's, but you didn't, they didn't, that was like the culture, you know, like that's like the rugby culture in it. Yeah. I, th- I think as well, like you forget that g- kind of g- gym, gym culture in itself amongst the, the, the majority of the population is kind of a new thing. Like you, you go back to the 1950s, not many, oh, of course people knew about training, but um, it wasn't a, a done thing was it you know you, like my, my grandma never went to the gym my mum never went to the gym like my dad did but only kind of in, as part of like training for football or whatever sport he was playing at the time people didn't as as commonly go to the gym it's, it's more of a common thing now gyms probably i would imagine that there are more gyms around now than well, there were in the you know 1950s back then, people were told that cigarettes were healthy yeah true so it's like why would i go to the gym i can just smoke a cigarette you ever see those old uh those wacky old like 50s uh fitness uh like I don't, I don't know if it'd be a commercial or like a, a TV uh, 
bit where there's like a, there'll be like women and they've got those weird belts kind of going around them and they're doing all these weird exercises which you know now are just total um, nonsense. It's like I fancy, have you ever seen those? I've seen them ones where it looks like they're having a wank. You know, obviously, I thought you it's might like have a dumbbell. Like, I know what. <laughs> you, you don't have to do it with a hand. Shake okay. weight. You yeah. can do two. Like, I, remember last week when we went skiing? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's just like, it's, it's kind of. Um, I suppose it's unfortunate for people that grew up in that generation. It was less of a an understood thing. But, but I mean, that's a poor excuse because we've known about like strength training since antiquity. Look at all those like ancient Greek statues and whatnot. Do you think it's harder nowadays? Right. So this is another thing. No matter what you're doing, right? So like if you're training for physical fitness or you're trying to grow a YouTube channel, or you're trying to start a business or you're trying to lose weight, it's a 100% your responsibility, right? Yeah. But people still seem to be lacking in the motivation or commitment to to take on board that responsibility, especially yeah. when it's so easy with like uh, binge food, you know, like, like it, do you think it's harder nowadays than it was in the past, given that fast food is like everywhere? No. It's way easier now. What's like to get in shape, you mean? Yeah. No, it's far easier now. Or are we just lacking in... Uh, I think people are, I th people always... Discipline. Like, yeah, people always like motivation and discipline. I think that's kind of like something that's intrinsic to you as a person, right? I think there's, there's not many things that I'm good at in life, I don't think. Um, but one thing I think I've got in spades is personal discipline. And, and there's not... If you tell me to do something, I, most of the time I can do it. And it might take sacrifice to do it, but that's not something that... I don't see that as like... Like, I don't particularly want to get up in the morning and train. Sometimes I do, yeah. but more commonly than that, I don't because it, it impacts on you know my schedule. I might not feel like I've got time for it, but there's always time to do it. I, I look at training like cleaning my teeth or wiping my ass. You you got to get you got to do it right. <laughs> um, so sometimes better than others. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but I think um, that that that's it's easy it's easier now than it's ever been because you have more uh, more notice. We, we've got the internet now, right? That makes me sound really old, but when I was a kid kids we, we didn't have the internet right <laughs> um and if you wanted to use it you had to wait till your mum was off the phone right to, to use it but so that, to, to find out what you need to do to have the information is far easier now than it's ever been um even if you look at like nutrition like so you, you say like yeah fast food's widely available but equally health food is very widely available if you think about it it's not cheap but like no. if you if you want to make uh if you want to hit uh, eat the things that you should be eating um and get help in doing that in terms of eating things which are a bit more enjoyable. Things like protein bars, even I don't eat a lot of them. It, it, back in 1980, you would have never heard of a protein bar, right? No. Um, but th even things like that, I think society is more geared towards choice. And I think it's easier now than probably it's ever But we been. do get spoon fed like misinformation. True. So like this is what, so to get this right, my brother-in-law, um, he were, you know them big yogurts like Onken, like strawberry yogurts and it says fat free. Yeah, yeah. So he was twatting one of them a day, right? <laughs> twatting one. <laughs> and it's like, I've been, I've been having these yogurts and a, a thing for my breakfast. And I'm like, it's yeah. like the fat free. And, and he's a, sugar. you know, he's a bit of a heavy lad. And, I, and I'm like, look, mate, I said, it says fat free on it, but just look at this, like, just look at the nutrients, look at sugar. And it's like 70 grams of sugar, you know, in a, like one of them big pots. Mm. I'm like, it may be fat free, but you've sacked it. Like it's because of the, like the sugar content. Beware of what the, the marketing is telling you. Cause that's the worst part. It's like the protein porridges. Yeah. protein porridge it's like yeah it's bags of carbs it's got like 10 grams of protein like boom full of protein yeah, come on mate have you seen those uh like protein mars bars you can get yeah, like yeah. three grams of protein more than a regular mars yeah. bar added protein yeah but i mean you're not gonna eat what a 400 calorie mars bar and it's just got six grams of protein and it's not really doing your macros a, a great deal of good um right i want to take this a little bit deeper then right so bear with me on this and you might agree or disagree right so you know when you were first starting out, yeah, did you know that you wanted to sort of sort of break the mold, as it were, to get to the position that you're in now? So to be more uncommon with with, with what like the position that you're in, because not many people are ever going to hit a million subscribers. Oh, you're talking about YouTube. YouTube, sorry. Training, yeah. Yeah. So when you dedicated the like when you said right, this is what I'm going to do, because you're going to break the mold, and you've thought right, I'm going to set up a YouTube channel, and I'm going to fucking go for it. Did you think I'm going to make it? No, I didn't. I never really thought I would set up a channel. And I never really thought I'm going to set up a channel and go for it. it because, but that's like, everyone's probably heard that from me hundreds of times before. It started out as a hobby, didn't it? Like yeah, no, but when you do, saw it, we're like, you, mean you, when you I were kinda, on to summit. Yeah, when I kind of jumped, when I left my job, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still never really thought I would, I never thought I would hit a, a million subscribers. Okay. I would have thought, if you told me that, like, whatever, whenever, whenever I left 2016, maybe, when I left my real job, um, I, I would have thought you were, there was something wrong with you probably. Um, 
But I, I didn't really, I didn't set up goals. My, my, my YouTube channel, oddly, is probably one area of my life where it's, it's the least goal oriented in a funny way because I, you know me, I don't spend a lot of time looking at the metrics and whatnot. No. And uh, I did, I, but I do um, certainly around, maybe after a year or two of trying to gradually improve the quality, there was a point when it kind of became a bit more structured in that like a day at work for me would yeah. be like not just filming and editing. If, the, if I wasn't doing one of those two things, I'd be objectively trying to look at how to make what it was I was doing better or how yeah. to make it more appealing. So um, I suppose I set goals in, in, in that way, but I didn't really, I never set out to say, oh, I'm going to have a million. You know, like Mr. Beast always yeah. talks about, I am, he's, he, there's a famous video on his channel, right? Where it's him at like, talking to himself yeah. at a later point in time, which is a very cool idea, by the way. But um, he, he always knew, didn't he? Yeah. In, in some capacity that he would be a very successful content creator. That's I never a, knew that. That's a pretty good example, right? So like, it's like the old saying, it. it's uh, at first they laugh and then they ask how. So whenever you're taking on any sort of task or challenge, this, it's not you're never going to be spoon fed, and it, no one's ever going to sort of hold your hand and get you there. And I always remember thinking like, so my motivation for starting sort of business videos, all these things. I remember watching, believe it or not, watching like Top Gear back in the day, and I mentioned it before. But I remember watching that and going, "That is an incredible job, right?" So I remember watching it, thinking, if they can, if that can be their job then it can be done. No one's going to show you how to do it. But if that, if that's, if, if you want, if you want to go get that, you can go get it. But to do that, you're going to have to put yourself well out of your comfort zone and you're going to have to try and figure it out. And people are going to point and be like, what the fuck's he doing? Or what are they doing? Yeah. But eventually you might actually get there, but through a lot of hard work. So that's why I were asking, you know, like, did you think, yeah, I'm going to might look a bit of a twat at the beginning, but I know I will get there in the end. Yeah, but that, you know me, that's, that's no obstacle to me. I, I'm not- You must have, you must have had some sort of, you must have been slightly self-conscious a little bit, maybe when you were at work, were you conscious of what people thought? Like, No, but I, I, I've never been that, that way inclined. I mean, I hate to like ruin your line of questioning, but um, <laughs> no, but I, th I, th I get that though. I understand that because- Because um, that would be the det deterrent for most people. A good, a, an example would be like my, when I left my job, my dad- Rest his soul. Um, he was he he didn't want me to leave my, my job. Yeah, because he just hated what I, the what I, at first anyway hated what I did. Um, or not that, that, that's probably the wrong word, but he thought he just thought it was a dumb thing. But, not, but you would expect that from a parent not really understanding YouTube and whatnot. And I don't think he had a great deal of confidence in me in terms of making good decisions <laughs> in life. But um, I think that was the only time I cared because it was my dad. Yeah. So I kind of thought like, oh, well, if my dad says this, you, you listen to your dad, don't you? Dad's not going to say you're wrong. Yeah. And that's probably the one time I just thought you're wrong. Yeah. And I know you're wrong and I think I can make it work. Right. And, uh, but like everyone else is that, that's just noise, but that's, I can understand why a lot of content creators would be. And a lot, I think a lot of them probably are people that make YouTube videos probably aren't don't become successful um, because of, of maybe they get uh, they put off by like the, the negativity be it from yeah. people in their, in their lives, real people they care about. So even like uh, internet trolls and you, you know, you've, you've seen those like memes or like uh, visual representations of like a miner and you know, something that's digging through a wall yeah. and the diamonds are on the other side of the wall and they're like an inch away and, and they then, turn back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a little bit, uh, a little bit like that, but it takes, I think a special type of person not special in that they're better than other people. That you have to have a particular mindset, I think, to not let other things affect you. If you know that you're on, uh, you know, like a path towards you're on the right path. Something. And to, to me, it was never like I never wanted to fucking take over the world or be like a Mr. Beast or anything. I just wanted to make entertaining content. It would be that for like minimum wage or for way more than that. Yeah. yeah I, as long as I was doing it and I was happy doing it, um, I knew it would, it, it, you know, like it it. Um, it would grow, but like, yeah, I, I kind of, I feel bad for people like that as well. I got a message the other day from somebody who's, uh, who would, um, had a, ch has a small, a reasonably small channel, you'd say. Um, and she, she messaged me and said, oh, I keep getting these really, uh, hurtful messages from trolls. And like, yeah, I watch your channel. I just wondered how you, how you deal with it. And I was like, I'm probably the worst person to ask because I don't, I don't deal with it. But I, was, I, I just said to you, the only thing you can really think of, I guess really is that if somebody's got a time of day to sit there and comment on a, on a, on a channel. And especially if they're repeat commenters, you're doing more towards achieving something you want to achieve. It sounds kind of hokey and, uh, and, and a bit um, vapid, but like that's good advice, right? Yeah. If somebody's going to take the time to criticize you, you're probably doing something right, I think, you know, so. Yeah, and like, just walk back to what you said about your uh, your old man. If he was slightly uh, against the idea of it, that's probably something to consider. If you've got, if you're like 
if you're unwavered and uncompromised in your sort of dedication to achieve something, even the closest around you, with your best interests at heart, that is going to try and deter you from doing stuff. Yeah. I remember that. Like, I remember when I said I was going to first do this. So, like, I I bounced out and, like, left pension, left everything behind. I'm like, I'm doing this. And everyone thought I'd lost my head. But I was, like, I was that, completely unwavered. I was like, I will do this. That's and what it, it takes for sometimes. Isn't it? Yeah. The, the, the problem is, I think, and I had it as well. Like, when I left my, my job, I come across, like, oh, yeah, it was just, oh, I just left my job. I just bought a house when I left my job. And I remember the conversation with, the, with Mrs. Beard. Like we bought a house three weeks earlier and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving this job. And she didn't kick off or anything. That's credit to Lynn. She was yeah. like, oh, okay. And I think she was a bit worried. Naturally you would be. But I think you conditioned that, especially if you if you, if you you work in like a tertiary industry and you work in an office or something like that, but probably as much like if you work in the Navy or whatever to think, right, this is secure, right? Yeah, you've yeah. got your pension, you've got your perks, which a perk to me is I get three extra days holiday because I've worked at the bank for 10 years. What the fuck kind of perk is that? It's like Mike talking about that dude who won a lawnmower. And you can <laughs> yeah, like, to think yeah. that, that, you know, you're, that's where you should be and that's where you're safe. But I, to me, it's always like, again, it sounds kind of corny, but you get one life, don't you? And like, you could always get another job. You can, like, if, especially I always thought like, I was, when I thought, I was thinking about it, I was like, right, well, I've got, the, I've got these bills to pay and I've got this to pay. What's the worst that can happen? My house is repossessed. My mum's not going to let me go homeless. So it can be... I think it's the fear of of leaving something which is familiar, yeah. which can often hold you back. And and I could the worst thing I could think of now is I'm thinking, fuck, like what would have happened if if I thought no, it's too much of a risk, you know? I'd still be working a fucking dead end job. Yeah. I'd still be miserable. I think you you'll get to a point where you know it's the right time to take the jump. Yeah, yeah. even if those around you disagree. And I were exactly the same, you know, like we'd got we'd just got a house. We were just about to get married. <laughs> and I was like, this is me. I'm going for it. Um, and yeah, like I, for me, I'm like, what's the worst that could happen? Like I might match my salary. I can might get to the point where I can match my salary mm. from when I were, were, were at sea. Or I might get close, but I'll be way happier. And uh, it's weird, man. I was like, you, you sort of goals change at first. I want to like scale up. Let's make this big agency. And we sort of got there a little bit. And that was fucking hard work. I was, I was more miserable with bags of members of staff doing the corporate stuff. I remember, I remember. Uh, like I was, I was ready to sort of jack, I was going to jack it all in. I was like, I've had enough of this. And then we've sort of turned it back a bit now. And like, this is probably the best it, best it could be, but you've got to be, you've got to be sort of bold in them decisions as well, aren't you? When you're taking on more responsibility. But yeah, yeah. I think it's, um, I think that's the key to it is knowing when to jump and like, you've got to go for it. Cause like you said, what's the worst that could happen? You fail and go back and get your job again. Yeah, I think, I think that now, I mean, like if, if YouTube ends tomorrow, <coughs> of course I'd be, I'd be sad that I don't get to reach the community that you have, uh, I've garnered, I guess, over the years. But ultimately, that's, nobody's going to die either, you know? No. I mean, we are, we're all going to die at some point. But I'm just, what I mean is you're not going to die as a result of that decision. And if that's not, if the worst that happens is you lose loads of money. And, you know, like, I mean, it's not, it's not the end of the world. But I think that comes down to your mindset, like what you're motivated by in life, I think. I've, I've got a question for, for like both of you. Um, was there anybody that you sort of saw in that field? So like Josh, for you, like doing like and having a media company or anything like that, or beard, someone with a YouTube channel that- George, you've got to stop calling me beard, man. It's getting weird now. <laughs> <laughs> do, it, do it for the audience, do it. For the audience. Um, but yeah, anybody that you sort of saw doing it that really like tipped you over the edge in thinking, yeah, that's actually really achievable. Like I could do that. No, I didn't. I, but I, I didn't, I never watched YouTube, honestly. Like, I mean, I didn't, I never watch it. I, it was, YouTube to me was one of those things I didn't even understand when I started doing it. I yeah. know you can make money from it or anything. Um, so I, but like, I've never really had things in like, you know, people that you look up to, which but apart from like your parents, yeah. I've never really like idolized people and thought, oh, because they do this, I can do it. Um, I just like, I, it was all, that, it, that's one thing you could credit YouTube with as a platform is it's somewhere you can kind of naturally find your tribe, find yeah, yeah, your yeah. audience. And, and you don't need, I don't think you, you know, when people, you see these videos, and, uh, you know, like how to channels on YouTube, and they'd be like, grow your channel. Yeah. And it's like, they'll have like pictures of Mr. Beast in there and whatnot. And you're like, and it's never been a massive motivation for me to grow my channel. It's just like you submit content there and people watch it. And if they like it, more people will come and watch it. So I, ne I never really saw something and thought, I think oh, you're answering it there. You're dead right with that. Like if you're watching the Think like think Media or whatever these channels, like there's a bunch of channels that's like get to a thousand subscribers in X and, you know, like do this and you'll get this sponsorship, whatever. Like if you're doing, if you're following that recipe, that ain't the path you want to be on. Everyone's following it. That means you're baking the same cornbread as everyone else, man. You know, <laughs> you, if you want to, you want, you want to make something special. 
Not that I would, I mean, think media probably, they they're, they're, they actually do a lot of, like in terms of technical stuff. No, yeah, it's really useful content, but, but, more, like, but if you're making content that's like, it's for that sort of like, if that's the goal, you know, like yeah. if that's, if you, it, it doesn't work, like you're yeah. not, you're not going to find longevity. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, George, I, uh, it's a, the first person that I really got hooked on with Casey Knight is that like that his content. And I watched that similar to how I watched, um, sort of like the top gears and the, all that sort of stuff and thought that's somebody's, that's his job, yeah. you know? It, it, it's but it's a ten, it were a ten minute curated vlog that were incredible, like you know, were a nice sort of work of art. And I thought, how fun does that look? You know, what's your favorite K- Casey Neistat video? Do you have one? Do you know what I looked at? That, that I love that one. Do what you can't. I don't know if that's the name of it, but that's the, that's repeated throughout the video. Do what you that's yeah, that's amazing. A, yeah, that's it. Oh my, that's that gives me a hard on that video. <laughs> I see. I I like. <laughs> That was a bit much. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but you're dead right with that. Like um, that were a Nike advert, I believe. He, he, he made an advert for Nike for like they had like a, a sports band. Was it? I yeah. Well, that's how good it was. It had take on what I didn't even know it was a Nike ad. Yeah, I mean, I just loved his like just the daily vlog. Like every single daily vlog was just for me. I just enjoyed watching him tell a little story and how raw it was. So like one thing you can get caught up in, as you well know, is like the technicalities of making videos, fucking frame rates and white balance and shit like that. He gets the shot to get the story. That's kind of it. It does always look good though. It does always look really good. Um, but I mean, New York City, man, like what a place yeah, to I suppose, shoot. I suppose it's always um, going to look good, isn't it? But yeah, I watched that and thought if I could even f- get a fraction of his ability or success that in my own, but again, it's got to be in your own style. So like you can't replicate it. Like I did, you know, the, I, I look at like the McKinnons and the Matty Apoyas, the, the filmmaking ones and thought, I can do that. And I started a channel on that basis and quickly fucking... <laughs> I'm just laughing because I saw Matt because I follow Matty Hapoy on Twitter. And that's a Twitter word then. <laughs> we, uh, uh, on Twitter and he put up a tweet yesterday saying, just downloaded Da Vinci. And I was like, what do we do with that information? <laughs> Why are you t- That's like me saying, just, just took, took out. Shit. Yeah, just, <laughs> just took a dump. Just just watching the news. <laughs> so, what? But he's a... Yeah, he's a, he's a great... Uh, Great lad, his stuff always looks great. Yeah, it is always, his stuff always looks great. But like, so um, imitation is the greatest form of flattery and there's nothing original anymore, really. Even Beard's stuff is... is, is Why the is, fuck are you calling me Beard now? He's poached off uh, <laughs> Nathan Figueroa. <laughs> so, yeah. But like, that's another thing, you know, you can get caught up in like trying to be so unique, but you'll if you can put your own twist and spin on stuff, then you'll find your audience, you'll get a style and you'll, you'll then work it out. So they were my sort of inspirations but that, our podcast i mean like this podcast the aesthetics are based on other people's podcasts but so we, what's the inspiration behind the podcast this were from the uh this style was yeah. from like the matty uh the matty and pete uh podcast have you seen there we're giving we're giving mckinnon and her a big big shout out with this week you're right but i would say how I you think, doing i like i, think, I like your new hair pete I think our podcast is is a bit more unique in the sense that like we are not following a it's completely a recipe. Yeah, you told me today that we were talking about like like pure uh, pumping iron. Come on! And now we're talking about YouTube. So I, know, I, thought, are... I thought it was like about physical feats of uh, of endurance and strength and whatnot. We can get back to that because we have I got some, we have got some more stuff to go through. Uh, what what other future challenges have you got? Have you got any in mind? Like, cause how do you now that you're sort of sitting at the at the top of the tree. What are you going about top of the tree, you know, man? You're at the top of the pyramid. How uh, how do you keep motivated? Um, or, is, or is it never end? Is it never like, I don't think you're never at the top of the mountain? I don't think, you, you know, you say it all the time, like, oh, you complete, completed it, mate. Completed it. Um, <laughs> I No, I don't like, I'm, I'm motivated by my, I think the only reason to get really philo- philosophical about it is I think the only reason I'm on planet Earth now is to kind of like try and, it sounds a bit wanky, but it's trying to entertain people. Which I think like, that, that you know what I mean in in a way that like something so daft is something that appeals to so many people and so many people look forward to. Um, I don't really need external motivation to. I think I get up in the morning when I want to shoot. Like I'm thinking I'm excited to shoot because I think pe- I'm going to make something that people want to watch and might enjoy. I think the, the only motivation is really I have when it comes to YouTube is like trying to improve things, which is that's part of why I went down to uh, doing one video a week and yeah. part, partly why I was. Uh, tapping you up f- to to shoot a, a crude up video for oh, me, yeah. um, which by the tone of your voice you've forgotten about. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you yeah, know, I, I don't. Motivation for me is mostly creative, like trying to do things differently and, and better. I, I don't really have these big designs on. I don't want to be like. A, I people say to me, oh, "When are you going to hit ten million subs? That's the next big milestone." I'm like, 
Never, but like it's not it's not a source of sadness to me that I'll never hit I'll never get a diamond play button. It's not a motivation to me. If you if you gave me two choices, right? You said uh, I can give you ten million subscribers right now, or I can guarantee you that in five years time, your videos will get roughly the same amount of views that they do now. I would take that one like yeah. easily every time because like that to me means more that people your current engaged audience. You know when you get like uh, insurance companies and yeah. they try and sell new customers better deals than. Uh, existing customers. I think I'm the opposite way around. Like it means more to me that the people that watch are entertained than to get new people watching. If that makes sense. I like that. I think if there's existing followers anywhere that really enjoy the content, new people will come anyway. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it naturally happens, but I just think uh, there are people that fixated, especially when it comes to YouTube, fixated on like m- more, uh, more people, more views, more likes. Like I don't even, I, don't, I couldn't tell you how many people liked my last video. I, I never take any any account of how many people are liking something. No. So I think there are people buried in metrics and they think, oh, I need more and more, better and better. And then there are people that just make stuff because they want to make stuff. And I'm in that category. And I'm, I'm thankful to be. I think that can really stifle your creativity if you're just making stuff to grow numbers. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to go with me then, George. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yeah, you can, though, because that's like where the whole clickbait thing comes in, in, into it, isn't it? Like, if you're lying for that, and there's plenty of that on YouTube. It's not exactly a, a platform which fosters an attitude of, of, of integrity and honesty, is it? No. You know, I've seen loads of videos of people like, yeah, I ate 20 pounds of food. No, you ate seven pounds of food. But just because you, you, want, you put it in the title, people get wise to it in the end. But, like, honesty, this sounds, again, a little bit wet but like honesty is is an integrity a reward in things on youtube in the long term yeah there's a reason why people stop when we spoke to that lad i forgot his name now down at the spotify event i'm alex yeah he, he gave us a very i was gonna say i'm sure he wouldn't mind but he might mind he might have been telling us in confidence but he gives a very uh compelling first-hand account account of why you know like it's it sounds good on the surface that you get all these brand deals with yeah. fucking manscapes and raid shadow legends or whatever but quickly people get sick of that um, and it's, you know, if it, it just kind of uh, uh, falls into that, you, you, it's, I think if, if you're honest with people in the long term, people respect that and they like you more as, just as in real life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's not always the case. You get some people that watch channels where they're just dickheads all the time, but like, I think that's a fair comment. And like, we've, 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 you know, we've said this a bunch of times about the, um, wanting to do brand deals or whatever. Like if you've got, if you need to, if you need to the money, like to, to sort of make it a success, then yeah, f- fair cop. And if it fits fair cop, um, but it can be massively more deterrent than it can be beneficial over the long term. Yeah. It, that was just like an example. They're not ba- inherently bad, but there are ways in what, you know. No, yeah, yeah. But like, I think it's a, it's a valid one because people think, see that as like a tick. I've got my first sponsorship. Mm, um, yeah. And I did on my channel. I was like, fuck yeah. But then you realize oh, actually it's not. Uh, and you, you know, if you want to sponsor the podcast, it's, uh, email Josh. Yeah. As long as you're not like a douchebag company, we'll, we'll consider it maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. We won't. <laughs> Have you got any goals like for your YouTube channel in terms of, oh, I'd love to make this video or do a video here or any sort of. Yeah. Like not like that. I don't think in, in specific, I think of them, but like I, I, I said that this year, like I want to get, there are a couple of ideas I've got that, but I need a crew f- crew to do them. You know, I can't self shoot them. So they'd be very different. Um, and I wouldn't want to move to something like that you know, and only do videos like that. But I, I think I'm just, I just, my, my formula is pretty much finesse to what it's, cause not, it's not never going to change a great deal. And I just get a kick out of little things here and there. Like if I can put some stupid gag in an intro or like if I can, if I, I do it like a daft little song or whatever, Christmas, think, little things like that. Uh, cause I think formula is a good thing. It can be debilitating in a way that it like, it, it, you, you're not moving on, but like also there's a reason, for example, People watch Coronation Street. It's not changed in 70 years. They're not having like slow-mo fight scenes, are they, between whatever, Roy Cropper and Ken Barlow. <laughs> then it, that, it's not, never going to change, but it's how you finesse that formula and try and improve, make little tweaks to it to make it better over time, I think. All right, so um, we've, we've sort of explained our um, motivations and goals and whatnot, but I did actually put it out on Instagram this morning, so I want to bring this up. So I put it on, on Instagram and I put, uh, we talk about goals on the podcast today. What are some of your 2023 goals? Uh, it can be physical, mental, financial, relationship. Tell us below. And uh, here are some responses. Do you have relationship goals? Is that a thing? Possibly. I, I mean... I thought that's like something that you call a couple. Like, are oh, you so <laughs> relationship goals? <laughs> no, but like... Uh, so like for me, for example, I, I'm conscious that like, I'm a dad now. 
you know, I'm a, I'm a husband. Look, and terrifying. It terrifies me that you're a father. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll get on to that later. I'm a husband and a, and, a, and a dad. So like, I want to, you want to be present, don't you? Like, you really don't behave like a husband and a dad. You go away more than I do. For <laughs> sake. Right. So the first one is from uh, E. Halford, 1994. To visit at least one destination I have never been before. Nice. That's, cool. That's a nice yeah. travel goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Joshua has put uh, to buy my f- first home with my girlfriend. That's a tough one, all right? Fucking these days. market, Jesus. Good luck with that, Josh. Uh, that, that was that, meant, that didn't mean it sound sarcastic. Then I meant like genuinely good luck. Drakey zero zero has put complete an Olympic distance triathlon. So that's a physical. Uh, what's the what's the difference between an Olympic distance triathlon and a regular one? Is there one? Uh, yeah. So uh, like uh, the, the ones that we know is like, uh, as Ironman ones, uh, just Google it for us, George. It's like the, the big one where you do a full marathon at the end. I think an Olympic distance one is like a, t- maybe a 10 miler run at the end or a, uh, well, a 10K at the end? 10K. 10K. Yeah, so, so what's the distance? So the Olympic or standard distance in triathlon is 1,500 meter swim, 40 kilometer bike and 10 kilometer run. Yeah. <sighs> Getting short of breath just thinking about that. Jesus Christ. That's going to take some time to, to complete that. I like it though. Physical yeah, goal. Man, we'll look at let, let, us target. If, let us know as well if you, if, you, if, you, if you do that. We'd love to hear about it. Uh, Josh underscore Maurice said, uh, I don't live close to my family, so my goal is to try and make more of an effort to see them. That's one of mine this year, actually. Is it, yeah? My, my, yeah, my, my family give me, I, I kind of get mad at them for like giving me grief. I'll be like, just don't nag me. You know, if I come to this, this one family thing that we have every, like once every I don't know, seven or eight times a year. Yeah. Don't nag me for not seeing me, but I'm like, you can't say that, you dick. It's like, <laughs> you know, but my grandma, you know, who's like 80, whatever. Yeah. Says, oh, I've not seen you lately. I feel like a real kind of, it's very rare that I feel guilty about anything, but I feel like a real pang of guilt. I think like, I, cause you know, I've spent, and that's one of my big regrets from when I know I talk about my dad all the time, but like um, not being around because you spend so much time working, right? And it's a small part of your life, you know, work, however, however much it means to you. I, very few things are more important than family other. So yep. I think to me, it's, that's one of mine this year. To, I, I'm not really sticking to it so far, but like- It's, yeah. it's a tough balance to strike though, isn't it? This is what I, you know, we was just saying before, like you've, you've only, there is only 24 hours in a day and you're going to sleep for a bunch of it. Then you've got to work to sustain your life or to pay your mortgage. And then yeah. you've got to try and find time in between that to be a mate to your mates, do your stupid podcast, see your family, take Lindsay out for some garlic bread. Like there's, you run out of time pretty sharpish, don't you? Yeah. Um, so Vicky, uh, Vicky J. Pitt has put, try not to fall out with my fiance on the lead up to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably going to happen. I think you just got to accept that's happening. Uh, I've got a good one. Just don't quit your job two weeks before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good advice there. Uh, Heen. So it's like he, H-E-E, there's five E's and an N. Uh, a 50K ultra marathon. Fucking hell. These sound absolutely, I feel like I, when I was younger, I think I wanted to, I, I, I think when I was, Maybe in my early 20s, I had this fucking bizarre idea that I wanted to climb a big mountain, not necessarily Everest, but I fully realize now that at this point in life that I could not do that. Yeah. I just physically do not have the capacity. You could. No, I could not. No, you could. I don't think I could. I disagree with you. I think you could, but it's it's, it's like something has to give. So it's a bit like the, um, like the, the guy that's doing the, the uh, either the marathon or the triathlon. To train for that, something has to give. I believe that if you're going to try and complete an Ironman or a half Ironman in, in, in a half competitive time, you're you can't probably going to have to, you can't see your family <laughs> or you're going to have to like go part-time on your job because yeah. the amount of time you have to sit on that fucking bike or swimming or running. Just go and know it's dry, man. Just was, don't train for it. <laughs> see what it, happens. Who was it on Ben's podcast? Did he do Mount Everest? Martin Hibbert? Kilimanjaro. Oh, Kilimanjaro. I've seen enough documentaries to know that, like, man, I'm not, I'm not doing it. As, as, as well, have you seen that movie? Is it, is it actually called Everest? The one with uh, Josh Brolin's in it and Jake Gyllenhaal's in it? Yes. You know, when it gets to the top and they're like, they're like 200 meters from the top or whatever. And they're like, nah, weather's bad, we're going down. I right, fuck you. I'm going for the top. And I'd be that guy that ends up dying, you know, like in the episode of The Simpsons, where like uh, Grandpa Simpson finds this dude that's died at the top yeah. of the mountain because he left him there. <laughs> You'd be that guy. I'd be that guy. I'd be at the top. Oh, I got to the top but of like this mountain. The, the, again, Everest in that, it's like almost like a, a um, if you've got, if you can, if you've got the money, you can pay to play. Like that, for me, don't get me wrong, it's a massive, it's an, it's an accomplishment, but you're paying some Sherpas and some Nepalese dudes who do it day in, day out yeah. to get you up there. Up there with no oxygen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I, 
I, I, that's me. You know, I, Ant Milton's done a more, he's done like Everest, he's done K2. Um, his mate Nims is the guy that did that. Um, what was it? 10 peaks, 11 peaks, seven peaks. He's done them all. Mate, I, I climbed I up- it, uh, I thought it was twin peaks or three peaks. Nah, it's, it's that, <laughs> <they're not. laughs> I climbed up that, uh, you know, is it Penny Gint in the, the, is it Yorkshire Dales? Yeah. It's just a little, it's just a hill really. It's not even a mountain. That was knackering. Yeah. Oh, it's fucking sheep shit everywhere. It's awful. But again, like, so the mountains are now littered with uh, fucking North Face jackets and bodies. Like, so the people like, they've not made it. Yeah. Who recovers them? Like, they just stay there and freeze to side of mountain. You'd be probably well preserved though. If they, if they ever do find your cops, you're probably not going to be decomposed, are you? He's going to be like, well, like, yeah, but it's so dangerous to go get him. Like that's, I'm not that's what I'm stuck like, there. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not, not a danger uh, freak. I got kind of a bit, uh, I read some statistic the other day or saw something about like how many people die a year skiing, which just put me off ever going skiing. Oh yeah. Not that I'm mean, inherently terrified. I'm not like a scared dude. You know what I mean? By, by, by things. But I just thought- like, I mean, Look at last week, look how many people died on cruises. Oh, two a month. <laughs> two a month go over the wall. Yeah. I thought it, you, were, you thought it was going to be more. I, thought, I didn't think there'd be that many. I think two a month is like, it's not that bad. It's is acceptable. It? It's like <laughs> collateral damage. You know I mean? But I, you know, I, th- I thought, man, skiing seems good. He, even in like the news year, about like that dude that played, uh, he played Hannibal Lecter in the, in the, the, that crap one, you know, that was like a prequel. He died just he was skiing down like a regular ski slope, hit somebody, smacked his head. Liam Neeson's wife, she died, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Schumacher. Schumacher, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I feel like for the sake of just, Going like wee down a mountain. Yeah. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to die. And plus, I don't like the cold, so I probably never go skiing. <laughs> and we either like it's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah. Um, right. So uh, another one we've got uh, from Lauren JG. I want to max out a machine at the gym. I like that. That's a cool goal. Yep. I mean, I'd say just get off the machines. <laughs> but um, no, I, I, I feel like if if a, a big part of the gym is as well. Um, I think is. Um, you know, there's more, more than one way to skin a cat. So like, you know, we talked about like, in, uh, this was supposed to be a little bit about physical discipline, but um, you, if you don't like doing something in particular, there's generally one, more than one way to do it, right? Yeah. So like, if I, if you don't like running, for example, like I said earlier on, that's why I don't run in the gym, right? Because if you don't like something in the gym, you can, your advocacy is going to be low, you're going to quit. Because yep. you don't, if you think, like the amount of people you see in, a, in January in a gym, just like pure sweating, like high, high intensity interval training or whatever. And then you see them for two weeks and then you never see them again. They quit because probably that was really hard. And they could have, if, if their goal is just to lose some body fat or something, they could have done it a different way. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's a cool goal, I think. Um, uh, it, I suppose it depends on the machine, but like. It's, it, I know we're not talking. I think there is some more about like losing losing weight, but you just reminded me of the guy. Have you, you'll know the dude on YouTube called Jeff Nippard. Have you seen him before? I've heard the name. I don't know. He's a bodybuilder type fella. He's like just he's a bit of a scientisty bodybuilder type. Googling him as you're telling me. Um, he did a video recently uh, about how to how to sustainably lose weight. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've said before about calories in versus calories out, but most people that diet diet hard for a goal. So it's like the shredding for summer or whatever. Bounce back even harder. Um, that's why Paddy the Baddy is sort of in the state that he's in. I think you know because he each each sort of training camp he goes through is almost like a fat camp. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, like rather than, if, rather than him trying to sustainably like lose weight over time and then stay a shape, yeah. he just sort of yo-yos. Mm. Um, and, and there's some stats that say like, if you sort of deplete yourself so far that you, you end up bouncing back harder on the other side of it. So he made, he, he made a good point. He basically said like, you know, try and lose, I want to say maybe like 1% a week over the time. So, you know, if you're trying to lose like a, a pound of body fat or, yeah, yeah. A, you know, a half a pound a week, for you to lose the 12 pounds or whatever, 20 pounds, it might take you six months, but you will sustainably keep it off rather than just going easier. Hard, it, hard it as fuck for the summer. And then by winter, you, you're parky again. That's the again. thing that's so mental to me. Like, especially with my sister, my sister's the worst for this, right? So when January rolls around, she starts to diet or whatever. She'd be like, yeah, I lost four pounds this week. And I'm like, you didn't. No, she, I, she, I know she lost four pounds, but she lost, but it's not four pounds of fat. No, no, you know, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And I know, I know what's coming. As soon as she tells me that, I know what's, she's like, that, that's, so that in her mind is like, that's a good that's week. That's the target. Yeah. And she doesn't realize that like six weeks down the line, eight weeks down the line, you're not going to be losing four pounds. You'll be losing maybe half a pound. Yeah. Right. And that, and that's when people are like, oh, I'm not losing as much as I want to lose. And it's like, it shouldn't, it should, you know, you, that's the hard thing about it though. You can't, oftentimes you can't tell people, can you? <laughs> you can't tell. Right. Uh, Pete, um, Pete and Pete and Jinglish <laughs> said, just stay alive. Could go that could yeah. be a, could be easy for some and harder for others. So I like that one. Uh, John Boy twenty six oh one at thirty five trying to pass uh, my electrical course. I hate lo- lorry driving. Absolute shit show of an injury uh, industry. 
I like that. That's just a, bit of a career total change. change career. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, John Boy two six zero one. John Boy, I hope you uh, play John Boy Walton. I hope you, I hope that goes well, mate. Um, everyone's always going to need electricians as well. Uh, Jamie O Maguire hit my goal weight before my thirtieth this summer uh, and go up two bouldering grades before Christmas. Two what grades? Bouldering, you know, like like climbing. A... I think it's nice, man. Yeah, we've got some, we've got some motivated people in these comments. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Coxie five one one pay off as much debt as possible so I can start enjoying life. Yeah, that's uh, I suppose that's a that's a tough one. It's tough, isn't it? Like it's a uh, money problem is like the it's got to be one of the worst sort of things to try and uh, overcome. That's but why if, I'm such a pragmatist, and you give me grief for like buying crap cars. Why are you buying a Nissan Figaro, and not like a really flashy Porsche or something? Yeah, there's because, a, there's uh, a balance to be struck in there of of maintaining a lifestyle, or you know, main, making sure you don't overexpend. Um, but also, if you are sort of enjoying the fruits of your labor. Like there's a, a balance to be struck. That's why I think all boxes go bust in the end because they had so much money and just got meant over it. So you got to find somewhere in between. Nicholas Cage did that, doesn't he? That's why he's making like 40 yeah, yeah. films a year when he should be fitting to retire. Um, Child's Vids, or Ch sorry, Chid's Vids has said, um, have my YouTube videos pay for themselves so I can actually pay bills. Yeah, that's a great motivation. What's, uh, do you reckon that's the name of the channel? Chid's Vids? Chid... Yeah, Chid, Chid's Vids. Hold on, let's have a quick look. At Chid's Vids, and he does vlogs. Yeah? Yeah. We know it's the, the, the same person. Yeah, it's definitely the same person, because I went via his Instagram. Oh, sweet. Uh, all the best of luck with that. Right, last one then from Tez underscore M83. To try and put myself first for once instead of others. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I feel like, that's, I feel like sometimes when people say that, I don't, I don't know really <laughs> to what extent they are putting others first, but I, I, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, give take, the benefit of the take, doubt. Take, what's the, what's the bloke's name? Tez. 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 I, I totally, man. If, uh, you, you got to make time for yourself. Can't all be about other people, you know? Man, we, we, we couldn't finish a podcast, could we, without a, uh, a little, a little fess hall. <laughs> I can't believe we yeah. got this, bro. I can't believe we got a brand deal with fess hall yet. I'm not sure how much money they're making, mate. I don't think they need to be, uh, we do it for, to be spending. We're basically doing it for free. Can we just, I just want to say it's sponsored by fess hall. <laughs> <laughs> all right, George, read them out, son. Okay, so we've got two fess halls. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> First one. My partner and I did the hall pass thing where you get to choose one person you can sleep with consequence free. She chose Ryan Reynolds. I chose Lisa from work. I haven't been allowed <laughs> to work function since. Yeah, it's not healthy that is it. I mean, I feel like it's uh, something's going to get. What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the hall there? pass in your house? Well, I, I don't, we, we don't have one of those. So, but we, we did the, ages ago, we did like a five just for fun. Cause I think we were pissed one night. We, uh, we did like a five people. Um, if you ever got the chance to, uh, have carnal relations with, uh, <laughs> but they have to be famous people. It couldn't be like, George. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, there, there is no Lisa from accounts or whatever where I work, but, uh, cause I, I work with just me. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, I think you can't have just somebody down the street. Can you? No, I don't think so. I think it's gotta be somebody famous. So it's, ne it's never going to really realistically happen with, was Emma Watson on that list by right, chance? Yeah, she number one, wasn't she? Yeah, well, I think it's been blown out of proportion, but that's just generally the go to. But uh, I don't think it should be top of the list. Oh, really? No, no. Well, who was top of Mrs. Beards? Oh, Tom Hardy. Oh, yeah? Fucking mile, yeah. That's we why I want to learn Brazilian Jiu Jitsu yeah, yeah. so I can come across him and <laughs> inevitably get fucked up by him. But, like, in my mind, I'd be thinking, well, I'll just go in with a flying knee or something. You've just reminded me it's on the topic of, uh, of sort of like setting goals and whatnot. You believe it or not, like, Tom Hardy is not a, a, a like a well accomplished jujitsu guy. He goes to like local competitions and competes. I love that. That makes me think he's a decent. Yeah, decent. So th th that's actually something I wanted to bring up. You know, like we set the I set these goals. Like I've set goals for doing half marathons, triathlons, going to do these high rocks. I am not competing at a high level. I am not an athletic person, but I want to just get in the mix and do something. You don't need to be like the most athletic or the best runner to go complete a half marathon. You just got to go complete it. And that for you is like yeah. a good achievement. So I think that's something that's probably worth saying because you, you often look at people that are at the top and go, I'm never going to do that. And it's de a deterrent, um, but it shouldn't be a deterrent. It should be like, I can, I can achieve that. On interesting story, just real quick. I know we're trying to wrap it up, but like I, so I was filming yesterday, right? And uh dude uh, comes in like really excited, this big, big, uh, big lad. 
And he, so he watches the video, so I'm like eating. I'm like, oh, he, he got there right at the end. So I, was, uh, I think I'd finished already. I was about to finish. And uh, I got talking to him afterwards. He wanted a picture and whatnot. And uh, I'm talking, I was like, oh, what's your name, mate? What are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm actually a, a sumo wrestler. Turns out he's the third best sumo wrestler in England. I even thought it was a thing. So I'm, talking, so I'm talking to him and he's like, yeah. And he's talking to me about weight classes. I'm like, shit, I didn't even know that it, it existed here. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I just I was, uh, oh man, I've forgotten his name now. I feel terrible. I think I, I think I got it on the video maybe so I could, but uh, I don't know if he listens to the podcast. But um, yeah, I thought that's, how interesting is that? He was, he was like, oh yeah, I'm not really that good. I'm third in, in England. I'm like, nah, mate, because that means you're you're basically like me, right? So yeah, okay, you probably got the, the big contest, like whatever the, the, the Nathans of sumo wrestling is, right? And you probably get absolutely battered. Yeah. But you do well enough that, you know, you compete at events and you, yeah. know, you might you might win a bit of money or some trophies or whatnot. I thought, that's that's cool, man. Like it's sumo wrestling, I don't even know that we, we should here. We should go watch that. Like, yeah, so I'd be game for that, man. I bet that'd be fun. Get Google good, George. Find out where this sumo get, wrestling get is. podcast. Yeah? That'd be, yeah, that'd be interesting. How the fuck do you get into sumo wrestling? How where were you? How did we get through the door? It was, it was only in Donny. It wasn't well, yeah, away, yeah. Doncaster. Doncaster, yeah. <laughs> You'll know Danny Mitchell. <laughs> one of your, uh, I saw one of your uh, mates was there by as well, by ch- uh, some guy that you knew. Oh, man, what's his name now? He's, he knew, he's uh, from the, the gym, the gym that you used to train at. I forget what he's called. What to do? What to look like? It's kind of, you're shorter than me. Right. It's very, very slightly shorter than me. Uh, quite a meek, not meek, but like quite a quiet kind of reserved bloke. Uh, rough hands. What do you look like? <laughs> I don't know. It's like a person. He had like short hair. Did he I, have a, a green top hat and a green <laughs> waistcoat, a leprechaun? <laughs> no, he wasn't. No, he was, no um, I don't know. I, tell you, I want to say Andrew. Was he called Andrew? Fuck, I don't know. I've forgotten. I've got my memories like, I think there's something wrong with me. But uh, anyway. <laughs> All right, one more festival. One, one more festival. More festival. <laughs> Every morning I have a competition with my dog to see who has the biggest dump. He doesn't even know we're competing and he still wins 50% of the time. <laughs> I can believe that one actually, yeah. <laughs> Losing to a dog. Uh, uh, I mean, Depends what size the I dog know, is. Yeah. If it's I, like I, I little... always beat my dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. maybe you'll win one, one day. <laughs> That's that, mate. I, I'm sure we've inspired the nation with that podcast. <laughs> yeah. I was coming in with like, I fully prepared with a, a couple of like um, studies on like nutrition and strength training and whatnot. I thought it was good. We're t- he's going to be talking about that, but we ended up talking about YouTube. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe. Catch you on the next one. <laughs> Peace.